As U.S. President Barack Obama and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu tried to rekindle their romance between the two countries, is there a double standard in the media when it comes to Israel and terrorism? Joining me now from New York is to discuss this as blogger and filmmaker Danny Schachter. Danny, before we begin to discuss this, I want to tell our audience a bit about an incident that took place in the early 1930s. It involved the um, Ergun Group, which was a right-wing military, uh, Israeli military group, now coined as a terrorist group by some. They blew up the King David Hotel, killing 91 British nationals, including soldiers and officers. And, of course, uh, in 2006, the Israelis commemorated this as a, uh, as a national day of celebration, where the British, the English, said that this is not a commemoration. Our people were killed. So why don't we know about the Ergun, and why do we hear much more about Hamas and Hezbollah over, say, groups that have now been designated by some as an Israeli terrorist organization? Well, I was struck by your saying that Obama and Netanyahu want to re reinvent their romance, if you will, uh, because that is an issue uh, that came up in a New York Times interview with uh, Tutsi Livni, who is the uh, head of the Kadima party and, and who is the opposition in Israel. In an interview with the Times, she boasted about how her parents, both of them, had been members of the Irgun uh, and uh, had gotten married while they were in that movement. And at the time, when this was going on, the New York Times referred to the Irgun as a terrorist movement. Uh, now, in this recent interview, Deborah Solomon, who's an excellent interviewer, but nevertheless, I guess in the course of her banter with, with her, uh, she said, oh, that was a more romantic era. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it was very romantic. And now, of course, the Times is being criticized for not making that distinction that, that terrorism, uh, in this case, uh, that was against the British uh, in Palestine, uh, was every bit as violent uh, and as contemptuous of the lives of civilians as some terrorists are today. And that if you're going to be anti-terrorist, you need to be consistent uh, and oppose terrorism. Danny, no I want to ask you, I want to ask you why the American people don't know about this spe specific organization, the Ergun and the uh, Haganah for that, for that matter. I mean, these are two groups that, did in, uh, that were involved in some very violent acts against both British and American forces back in the day. And now you have Rahm Emanuel, the current uh, chief of staff for the president. His father is a former Ergun officer, as well as Yatsik Rabin and a lot of the other uh, Israeli prime ministers. So that's almost, for example, as um, Khaled Mashal, the head of the uh, Hamas, becoming the is the Palestinian president than us praising him. Is there an obvious double standard, and why don't the Americans acknowledge the fact that there's two different sides and we only acknowledge one? Well, there's two issues. You know, the issue, the key issue that you raise is why don't Americans know? And that's because Americans aren't taught about these things. Our media doesn't offer context. It doesn't offer background. It doesn't help people understand the underlying dynamics. When people hear Israel, it's always Israel versus, you know, the Palestinians. It's not Israel as a country which is itself engaged in an internal debate over what Israeli policy should be. The right wing happens to be dominant in Israel right now with Netanyahu and uh, Lieberman and others uh, who are, you know, extremely conservative. They don't necessarily represent everybody uh, in Israel. And most Americans don't know that either. So to expect that they would know about Israeli history that goes back many, many years Danny, if I is, could just... is to be asking a lot. It, you know, this is an indictment of our media and our educational system. Danny, if we could look back now at the Gaza flotilla attack, I mean, we had video footage from the Israeli Defense Force out for a while that showed, you know, some of the Gaza flotilla activists were assaulting the Israeli uh, commandos. But then we later got footage from cultures of resistance that showed the complete opposite. So the, wheel, the wheels of, uh, I wouldn't call it propaganda, but media intervention here, are they so strong on the Israeli side that you rarely see the double standard uh, created on incidents like the Gaza flotilla attack, but also the Gaza war? Well, I made a film called WMD, Weapons of Mass Deception. And a lot of the media engages in mass deception. The Israelis very cleverly understood that 
He who controls the pictures, he who controls the images, who controls the narrative, controls the way most people understand the issue. And they were very, very shrewd about getting their story out first and then denying the other side, so to speak, or the people who were kept bringing the humanitarian aid, denying them a right to meet the press. They, they, they arrested them. They wouldn't let reporters interview them. So it's not surprising that people only saw one part of the story. Later, the other part of the story story came out contradicting the story the Israelis were telling. And this happens repeatedly and constantly in, in uh, international affairs. It happened in Iraq. It's happening in Afghanistan. It's happening in other parts of the world. And it also is often happening in America where we're told one thing and then later we find out, oh, there's much more to the story. The BP spill, so-called spill, well, is I, a good I, example. That's, a, that's actually what I wanted to get into right now. Iran was also part of their agenda today. and they talked about uh, reducing nuclear weapons in the world and in the Middle East specifically, and yet they didn't talk about Israel not being a signatory to the MPT or uh, explaining the undis undeclared weapons that Israel has. Is there also a double standard in discussing Iran-Israel here in the U.S. media? Of course there is. You know, Iran is the enemy. They're the bad guys. They're, they're the act, part of the axis of evil. And so, you know, when, when Iran does anything positive or attempts to make any sort of initiative for a kind of a peaceful change, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, derided, you know, in a contemptuous way. Uh, and, you know, of course, in Iran, there are many Iranians opposing the current government as well. And those are the voices we hear. Uh, we don't hear the voices in Israel who are opposing the Israeli government in the same way we do about the Iranian government because it's all consistent with what American policy thinks is important and the media unfortunately marches in lockstep uh, with what the government line is and that's been a problem for many many years and I don't see it changing unless people sort of reject that I think the presence of other media RT and others that are offering another perspective or other perspectives is so important because otherwise we're only given one one voice and one voice only. Well, that was filmmaker and blogger Danny Schachter in our New York studios.